the Bible, the Quran, and corruption. This video is my attempt to show why the claim made by some Muslims that the Bible is corrupted is irrelevant, especially when it comes to proving the super superiority of the Quran. Usually the claim goes uh, something like this. The quote original unquote Bible has been corrupted. People have changed it. It is not trustworthy. Uh, and the Quran is man's final revelation from God. The Quran is perfect and is protected by God. In this video, I will use um, the following methods. I will use a little bit of history. Uh, display my research and at least one picture. First, I would like to start with some basic definitions. Uh, number one, Bible. Uh, a religious, religious writings consisting of the Old and New Testaments for Christians. B, the collection of Hebrew scriptures for Judaism. C, uh, several, uh, there are several Bibles depending on the sect. 24 books for Judaism. The Catholics have 73 books in their Bible. The Protestants have 66. And the Ethiopian Orthodox has 81 books. 2. Corrupted. Made inferior by errors or alterations as in a text. 3. Original. A primary form or type from which varieties are derived. For Torah, the Pentateuch, being the first of the three Jewish divisions of the Old Testament. 5. Tanakh, the three Jewish divisions of the Old Testament comprising of the Law, or Torah, the Prophets, or Nevi'im, and the Hagiographa, or Ketuvim, taken as a whole. 6. Perfect, without flaw accurate, exact, or correct in every detail. The following is a rough timeline of history. Writing is said to have emerged around 3500 uh, BC in Sumer in Iraq. Before then, information was transmitted mostly orally. That includes religious information. Judaism is not the first and is not the oldest religion on earth. Um, more on Judaism. This is a rough timeline. Um, Exodus is said to have happened between 1504 BC to 1454 BC when Moses, uh, as their leader, led them out of Egypt and supposedly Moses, Moses wrote the Torah. Two, uh, Israel is founded and the first king is Saul. That happened between 1204 BC and 1104 BC. Um, three, Israel and the Jews are under occupation of the Greek slash Romans between 354 BC and 254 BC. Around 200 BC, between 200 BC and 280, the Tanakh is then canonized. Now here comes for uh, the rough timeline for Christianity. Jesus is born around 4 BC, 4 to 6 AD. 4 BC to 6 AD, excuse me. Uh, Jesus dies between 30 AD and 33 AD. Paul and the apostles begin their ministry between 33 AD and 100 AD. The second temple is destroyed between around 70 AD. The Council of Nicaea takes place around 325 AD. Uh, Synod of Hippo, it takes place between 393 AD and 400 AD. The Protestant Reformation happens around 1500, in the 1500s, excuse me. Uh, this is a rough timeline for Islam and the Muslims. Uh, the first thing is that Muhammad is born around 570 AD and dies around 632 AD. The Quran is canonized by Uthman around 653 or 654 AD. Uh, just as a quick note, I would like to point out some other holy books from other denominations 
the first being the Book of Mormon by Joseph Smith. Number two, the New World Translations of the Holy Scriptures by a group of Jehovah Witnesses. I wish to point out that there were Jews in Arabia around the time that Muhammad was born. It was said that they had a sizable community, for example, in Medina. Khadijah's uncle, uh, Warak Raka ibn Nafal, is said to have been a literate Christian. Thus, there was at least one Christian in Arabia. He may have had access to a Bible as well. Uh, Khadijah, if you don't know, is uh, Muhammad's first wife. Uh, she was a little bit older than him. Okay, so this is the time where I would like to take the opportunity to show you a picture of the difference between the Jewish Bible and the Christian Bible. As you will notice, you will see that there are several outstanding features to include the uh, the way that the books are arranged and the way that they are numbered, the Jews choose to combine um, some books such as Kings, Samuel, and Chronicles while the Christians consider them uh, different books, one and two usually. So that is one of the reasons why uh, the Christian Bible, the Christians Bible Jewish half, if you will, they call it the Old Testament. It has 39 books and the Jewish side has uh, the, the Jewish Bible has 24 books but it's not just that the, the, they are numbered differently they're the, the orders are also um, slightly different so that affects um, context history and so on and so forth so it's something to keep in mind so when the Muslim makes the claim that the Bible is corrupted basically uh, one of the first things I want to um, know from him or her is that uh, which Bible are they talking about? Because the Jews have their Bible, the Catholics have their Bible, the Protestants have their Bible, and so on and so forth. Um, so depending on which book you're talking about, then you can start the conversation. And even if you, for example, were to take the, the Tanakh, which is the Jewish Bible, uh, as the books were developing, um, my argument is that you know basically change has to happen for example when Moses supposedly wrote the the, the Torah the first five books um, later on through history you know the the Israel gets formed as a state and they have their king and so on and so forth and and those um, stories get captured uh, on paper and get added to the Torah um, and so that's could be considered a change so if that's a change then it's corruption or whatever but uh, it is what it is uh, once the canon finally gets ratified between 200 BC and 200 AD by the sages according to the Jew Jewish folk tales then perhaps they mean that Bible has been violated if you will or corrupted and they might be right because when the Christians came and they made their writings they attached their writings onto the Jewish um, Bible and then of course Joseph Smith came and he did this thing and the uh, Jehovah Witnesses came and they have their own translation um, the Catholics have 73 books the Protestants have 66 you know so there's there's variances because each sect only recognizes their book as the primary uh, holy book and they just say by default that their book is inspired and, and that's that and I think that's because it's it should be clear to see that men are making this, these decisions um, also when it comes to Islam um, not a lot of people in Arabia knew too much about the Jewish and the Christian um, stories there were some Jews and obviously there were some Christians but when Muhammad started to convert people he probably converted the people who were uh, unaware of what a Messiah is and all the things that he was really talking about they just kind of liked it and went along with it for whatever reason uh, but a person such as myself who theoretically could have been standing in the crowd and listening to what Muhammad is saying, especially if I had access to the book, could have, could have identified um, things that are wrong with what he's saying. And if he says that um, my Bible is corrupted, I'm like, you know, how, how would he know? He, supposedly he couldn't read, right? So um, how would he know what's corrupted or not unless he um, knew the stories? prior 
you have to know what right sounds like or look lo looks like in order for you to say that the Bible is corrupted. And even before Muhammad came into the scene, we knew by default that the Jews and the Christians were not getting along. They had two different sets of writing writings, and uh, once the, the Christians attached their writings onto the Jewish Bible, that could constitute a change. But uh, again, when you have different sects, then you, you can theoret re theoretically have that, like we actually do in the case in the, of the Jews and the, the Christians, and still function. So if they, they consider that a form of corruption, then, then that's fine. Furthermore, I would like to point out that since, um, at least in today's context, you have um, a lot of the stories contained in the Quran from the Bible, I, at least, uh, I try to show my Muslim friends that the mistakes that the Bible have are also in the Quran. Specifically, I'm speaking about the virgin birth. I, I try to explain to the Muslims and the Christians, if possible, that a virgin cannot give birth without intercourse with a man. But of course, they take it as a matter of faith. Jews, some Jews, know that where the Christians got the story from. The story comes from Isaiah chapter 7. And um, Muhammad just kind of took that and, you know, added it to the Quran. So this is one example that I like to use, my best example, actually, of to show the Muslim how um, saying that the Bible is corrupted is, is really irrelevant and meaningless. And that Muhammad, when he was getting his revelations, making the religion, he just kind of picked and chose whatever he liked and he imported it into the Quran. In order to show that the Bible has been corrupted, you would have to have what would be deemed and accepted as an original Bible. And you kind of have sort of original Bibles in that only if you accept what each sect says. For example, the Jews will say that Tanakh is the quote-unquote original Bible, so to speak. That's their canonized Bible to be more precise. The Protestants will um, point out to their 66 books, the Catholics to their 73, and they believe that they, those books were inspired and so on and so forth. So um, they can point to the other group and say that those people, they, they tried to, to change it, but we have the um, inspired word of God and they just roll with it. So this is um, what I try to uh, show Muslims if they're willing to sit down and, and, and speak about the subject. And so I think, thank you for your time and I'll see you next time.